Hi everybody. Uh, today we are going to talk about the nitrogen cycle again. I'm going to go over this in a lot more detail today. Uh, but we're going to look at my 125 here for a little while. Right now it is in nice chillax mode. This is the way the tank looks most of the time. Unless I'm walking right around in front of it or I'm feeding it or something. Uh, it's usually a very uh, relaxed tank. There's not a lot of activity going on there except of course for the Congo Tetras. Way up in the top left you will see my Tenopoma acutirostra and way down on the far bottom right behind the woodwork that you cannot see is my snakeskin gourami and dead center right in that mass of roots is where my Cynodontus yipteris likes to hide and then of course you can see the two clown loaches right there so in a moment I'm gonna go ahead and throw some sinking food in there it'll probably get the Tenopoma interested uh, but he's not really a bottom feeder so you won't get to see him eat uh, but you will get to see the catfish come out quite a lot more and hopefully my elephant nose will come out too. This is probably going to be a little bit longer of a video. i got a lot to cover today so that will be enough stuff to keep you interested while you listen to me chatter on. Uh, recently I had a power failure and I set up a generator which kept my tanks up and running. So when the crisis was over and I disconnected all the power cords and everything and put the generator away, I forgot to plug the filter back in for this tank and I went about 34 hours before I noticed and fortunately I noticed simply because I decided I was going to do a water change just sort of late night spur of the moment and when I went to unplug the filter I found I realized it was already unplugged. So fortunately more time did not go by but had more time gone by I would have been okay. My tank was fine, I checked the water parameters and my um, ammonia level was at zero, my nitrites were at zero, and then of course my nitrates were right where I thought they would be, indicating that my nitrogen cycle was still working perfectly fine, despite the fact that my filter was not even functioning. My filter was completely disconnected from the tank, and yet I had my nitrogen cycle working perfectly fine. So we're going to discuss that and how that works and why it all stayed alive. But first let me go ahead over here and throw some food in. I'll get a little more activity going. Uh, that's a combination of broken up algae wafers and sinking shrimp pellets. And pretty soon everybody will be pretty active looking for those. So real quickly I want to go over the nitrogen cycle so we're all on the same page. I get a lot of new viewers all the time. Uh, I can't just assume everybody knows what I mean when I say the nitrogen cycle. So real briefly you've got ammonia being produced in the tank by uh, waste products, whether that's from the fish or plant material, uneaten food, whatever. It gets broken down into ammonia. The ammonia is then oxidized, or you can think of it as being eaten by a specific species of bacteria. The waste product from that bacteria is a chemical compound known as nitrite. Uh, still toxic to fish, but not nearly as toxic as the ammonia. That too is digested, if you will, it's oxidized by a different species of bacteria in the tank and it is broken down into nitrate. Now nitrate, we can argue all day long as just how toxic it is to fish, but it's far, far less toxic than the ammonia or the nitrite. And we get it out of the tanks primarily by doing water changes. So that's more or less the nitrogen cycle. Ammonia gets broken down into nitrate. And it does so through this bacteria. Now there's some important things to know about this bacteria. For one, it is photophobic. It will not grow in brightly lit areas. It is also an aerobic bacteria. It needs oxygenated water. It also, whether it feeds on the ammonia or it feeds on the nitrite, it is a stationary organism. It cannot move. It cannot go to the food. The food has to come to it. So you need water circulation and water circulation is key to how my tank survived a day and a half with no filtration. So how that happens is let's first start by talking about what your filter actually does in your tank. The primary thing that your filter does is provide circulation. I know a lot of people think it does a bunch of different stuff but the primary thing your filter does is it provides circulation it moves water around the tank and that gives you your gas exchange at the surface whether you've got agitation or not the movement and the circulation of water is what's keeping the oxygen rich water moving around the tank 
I've done a series of videos on that recently, so I'm not going to get into that in any great detail now. Surface agitation or no, you've got your circulation being generated by your filter. You've also got habitat within your filter. It's a dark area that has water that's rich in oxygen as well as being rich in ammonia and nitrite being moved through your biomedia. So you're, you're moving the water across your bacteria. As I said, the bacteria can't go to the food. You've got to take the food to it. You actually have space in your filter to provide specifically habitat for this bacteria to live and then you have a pump that carries water across that bacteria and back into your tank and that's what's cleaning these toxic chemicals out of your water so that's more or less all your filter does the idea that you're actually taking um, any of the physical detritus out of the tank is relevant but it doesn't really accomplish much all it does is take the physical detritus out of your line of sight. It's still in your tank. The water is still flowing over it. It's still, it's just not moving around in the water column anymore. It's not trapped underneath your rocks, you know, so when the fish swim by, they don't kick up all the mulm off the bottom. You're just trapping it in the medium, in your filter, but it's still technically in your tank. You're not removing it. You're just sort of sweeping it under the carpet. The real thing your filter is doing is moving water around the tank and providing housing for your nitrifying bacteria. So the circulation is the key. And the reason my tank stayed alive when the power shut down or when my filter was shut off for whatever reason, in this case it was because my bonehead forgot to actually plug it back in. But what was happening was I still have that 850 gallon per hour power head and if you'll notice the roots and the leaves and everything in that tank, I've got quite a bit of water flow through the tank. I've got quite a bit of circulation in the tank. Now, the nitrifying bacteria does not only live in your filter. It lives on any surface area that's dark, that has oxygenated water moving across it, and that has ammonia and nitrite rich water moving across it and when I say ammonia rich or nitrite rich I don't mean there's even necessarily detectable amounts in the water but it's being produced in the tank and it has to go from where it's produced to get to where it's being dealt with therefore it is in your tank your, your nitrifying bacteria would die if there was not ammonia in your tank it's just such small amounts they're not detectable so when I say ammonia rich water that's what I'm talking about it's the water that's keeping your night you know you, your nitrifying bacteria is keeping your fish alive but your fish and the waste is keeping your nitrifying bacteria alive your, your fish tank is an ecosystem it's this it works together and so if one thing stops so does the other so let's imagine what would have happened if my tank had shut down and I would forgot to plug the filter in and I did not have any water circulation and the water went stagnant. A lot of things start happening when, when you get into that situation where your tank goes still. For one, you've got no water circulation so you're getting very poor gas exchange. The gas exchange will continue to happen near the surface but let's call it oxygen rich water will be closer to the surface and the further away you get from the surface the less oxygen you'll have you've got fish in the tank that are producing carbon dioxide so the carbon dioxide will begin building up and any that's near the surface will leave and you will get that gas exchange at the surface but it's only going to be at the surface you've got nothing moving that oxygen rich water down into the tank it's just going to stay near the surface Meanwhile, down deeper in the tank, you're going to have carbon dioxide building up. This is not only going to displace the oxygen to some degree, or as the oxygen is being used up, it's being replaced by the CO2. CO2 dissolved in water is also carbonic acid, and carbonic acid building up in your tank is going to start your pH plummeting. In addition to all of this, you've got the nitrifying bacteria that, in my case, I've got living on all the rock work, and I have... Um, a substrate that is actually designed to have a lot of surface area. It's got uh, open pores. It's, it's meant to have a lot of nitrifying bacteria living within it and therefore it's designed to have water flowing through it as well. So if the, sh if the tank shut down and went still, all of that nitrifying bacteria that's in the filter we can't even talk about because that's now disconnected from the tank, but all the nitrifying bacteria that's in the tank is now going to start starving. There's not going to be any 
oxygenated water moving over it. There's not going to be any food moving over it. And so now the, those organisms are going to start dying. And of course, as soon as they start dying, they start breaking down, they start producing ammonia, and the process just starts snowballing on top of itself. Meanwhile, your pH is continuing to plummet. Uh, a lot of bad stuff is starting to happen. I don't know really timelines on this kind of stuff, how long it takes, the, the way your tank is set up, the depth of the water, the stocking density, these are all going to be variables, so I can't give you any real timeline, but it doesn't take long for this stuff to start happening. I wouldn't want my tank to go dormant for six hours, let alone 36. Um, bad stuff starts happening pretty quickly when your tank goes still. So the reason my tank stayed alive was simply because I've got that power head in there continuing to circulate the water. We know this is true because I tested my ammonia, I tested my nitrite, both of them tested at zero. That tells me that, tells me a lot of things. It tells me that, first of all, my power head is doing its job. It's moving enough water to do several things. It's keeping the water circulating around enough that it's keeping it well oxygenated, or at least oxygenated enough that my fish did not suffer. No one was swimming up near the top. Nobody was acting any differently. Nobody looked like they were in any sort of distress. And it's moving enough water around to take that oxygenated water all the way down and move it through my substrate enough that my substrate bacteria, you know, the nitrifying bacterial colonies living in my substrate, we're getting enough of that water flow over it to keep them alive and we know they stayed alive because I had no nitrites or ammonia in the tank. That's proof that my nitrogen cycle was continuing to work even though my filter was disconnected. Now when I opened my filter up it was foul, it was stinky, it smelled like a dead animal, it was just nasty. I was like almost gagging as I was pouring it out. Um, it was gross and that's because the water flow stopped and it stopped getting oxygenated water. It stopped getting food. All of the stuff in there, not only all the nasty stuff that's in the filter itself, you know, the, 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 the fish waste that's bound up in the medium, it, it, all of my nitrifying bacterial colonies started dying and rotting. I mean, it, it was nasty when I opened this thing up. So it's because there was no water circulation. Water circulation is the key to keeping your tank alive. Um, Again, we could have the discussion all day long about surface agitation and how much more effective it is at gas exchange and so on and so forth, but you can splash around on the surface. If you take a stick and move it back and forth, and you make a lot of agitation at the surface, but you're not moving the water around the tank, you're not accomplishing a lot. It's a lot more than just the surface agitation. It's the circulation around your tank that makes it so important. And that's why my tank stayed alive for 36 hours. So at this point, I feel confident that I actually could. Um, to, to jump back for a moment, I had someone challenge me and say, just go ahead and take your filter off your tank for a month and see what happens. Uh, because I've mentioned before that you can maintain a tank without a filter on it provided you have enough circulation and provided you're willing to get in there and physically remove the detritus rather than have it get trapped in your filter. You'd have to go in there every few days and do a little bit of a vac. Otherwise, you're going to start getting really a bunch of uh, detritus and physical stuff. It's just going to start piling up on the bottom. You're going to have to get in there and remove that physically because you'll, you won't have the filter pulling it out. But as long as you've got the circulation to keep the gas exchange moving and to keep the water flowing through your media, as long as you've got enough surface area within the tank, if you've, you know, I wouldn't necessarily try this in a bare glass tank, but you can see this is not a bare glass tank. It's got special media in there that's designed to have thriving bacterial colonies to help break down fish waste for the plant growth, et cetera, et cetera. So I inadvertently proved what I said I wasn't even going to be willing to try to do. I, was, I said, there's no way. I'm just going to disconnect my filter. You've got to kind of prepare your tank for that. You can't just do it. And apparently my tank was well managed enough that I can just do it. I did it, and I did it by accident. So if it survived 36 hours and I was not even getting any signs of ammonia or any signs of nitrite, that's an indication to me that I was good to go. I could have just not turned that filter back on and my tank was functioning just fine. Again, I would have had to go in there on a much more regular basis and vac it. But as far as it crashing or having an ammonia spike or anything like that, I got nothing. So my tank is very well maintained with redundant systems. If I do a bonehead maneuver, like forget to plug the filter back in, 
my power had saved me. So, you know, I like to say I've Dan-proofed my own tanks. I've proofed them against my own forgetfulness or whatever. And in this case, you're looking at a nice, good, healthy tank because of that. If I did not have that power head in that corner, this would be a dead tank, and this would be a very, very different video right now. So I hope that made a little bit of sense. Maybe I'll do another video just specifically about the nitrogen cycle. It's been a while since I've done one of those. So leave me a comment. Let me know whether you want to hear that or not. Uh, again, I know I get a lot of new... Uh, viewers on a regular basis so if anybody wants me to do another video about the nitrogen cycle specifically uh, I will certainly do that but please go to the comment section and let me know I will do my best to get back to everybody provided I get the notification which I don't always get so forgive me if I miss you and thanks again for watching please subscribe that way you won't miss anything else I got coming up and I will see you real soon in the next one